Ireland against the US, rank four against rank 16 in the world. These are two sides which seem to play each other kind of at least a couple of times relatively recently. Some of the games this weekend, you've got to look back kind of 10 years or more for some for some recent fixtures, but not so much between Ireland and the US. Uh, it's kind of a much changed Ireland squad from the one that beat Japan 39-31 uh, last week, the U.S. squad is a fair bit more stable uh, coming off their 43-29 loss to England, which is not actually that bad. I know they conceded almost, well, not almost 50, but like 40-plus points, but they still scored four tries and got within 14 points of England. So it was a young England squad, but yeah, I still think given the circumstances of the U.S.'s limited prep time, I think they did pretty well. So yeah, it should be an interesting game. I'm very much looking forward to it. We'll go through the squads. You guys can have a look at those. I'll put them in the description as well. Some of the stats and, um, yeah, the predictions. You guys can let me know your thoughts on how you think this one is going to go. Uh, they did play in 2018. It was 57 points to 14. They played in 2017. It was 55 points to 19. So in recent times, anyway, the Islanders scored 50-something and the U.S. have not cracked 20. Uh, going back in history a bit further than that, um, you know, 2013 was actually a three-pointer, 15-12, 2011, 22-10, and then 2009, 27-10. So it seems like historically the matchups were a bit closer than the 2017, 2018 ones, I guess, when Ireland was really surging, you know, and uh, under Joe Schmidt becoming a proper force. Although I seem to remember when they played in 2018, they played like this maybe kind of a, a youngish team so anyway um average score of the last five games is 35 13 but the predictions for this one are a, a, a bit uh, i guess similar but maybe a little bit more than that anyway uh we'll go through the squads kill coin kelleher and o'toole is the front row for ireland tom o'toole will get his debut so congratulations to him kelleher and kill coin started last week as well beard is up from the bench to start alongside james ryan so it's a leinster combo and that locking duo, James Ryan, 13 from 14 tackles last week, although he did cop a bit of criticism from some areas and um, praise from others. He seems to be a bit of a divisive guy. I don't know if it's just because he didn't get selected for the Lions. What is up with that? He's getting hate from some corners and, and praise from others. It's a bit of a weird one. I'm kind of outside the know on, uh, on all that, but I know Beard and Ryan should go pretty well together. Doris moves to six because... Uh, Coombs is getting a start at number eight, so that's a, a nice, youthful looking six and eight. Plus, Timoney gets his debut at seven. Haven't seen Timoney as much, but I seem to remember him getting through a lot of tackles, which is kind of the shoes he has to fill, which were last week Josh van der Fleer. So, yep, uh, we'll see how he goes. Um, Peter Amani was in six last week, but Doris, at least ball in hand, should be pretty uh, effective. He had like 45 run meters last week, so. Plus, he's got great handling, although Peter Martin had a great offload, so he's got big shoes to fill as well. Uh, Craig Casey gets a start, and there's no Gibson Park this week, so that's great to see. He's another kind of hot prospect player. He needs to um, he needs to impress, and he's got Carberry next to him, so they should already have a bit of chemistry together. So uh, going forward, that's maybe an Ireland combo. We'll see more of. Time will tell. Uh, McCloskey and Hume is your midfield. Hume is on debut as well, so as I mentioned, it's kind of maybe to be expected that this is the game where Andy Farrell tries some things against Japan, who pushed them relatively close, man, um, was maybe not the time to do it, hence the experience lineup, but this is the one where we're seeing a bit more experimentation, so congratulations to whom, and uh, McCloskey, as I mentioned in the last game, he's a big old unit, so we will expect to see more of him being a big unit, and um, he made like 14 out of 16 tackles last week as well. So it's not just about being a big ball carrier. Uh, Conway, Balakud, and Keenan is the back three. I'm so glad for Robert Balakud, man. I haven't seen him play for over a year easily. That's how much I kind of watch Ulster, unfortunately. But I did see him, was it 2018 or 2019? Before he had his big injury layoff. And he looked sharp. And that was the first time I'd seen him. And I thought, man, he's a big rangy but, you know, a good winger. Seemed to be pretty quick and good under the high ball. So I'm glad to see he's kind of continued his development. And Conway is just one of my favorite kind of Mr. Consistent wingers as well, who I think is perennially underrated. Keenan at fullback. Safe pair of hands. So it's a nice look at our lineup, man. you got Heffernan, Ed Byrne, and Bielham on the bench. Bielham drops from... Um, 
uh, from starting last week for Neem Witcherly gets his debut, so congratulations to him. Likewise, Paul Boyle, Kalen Blade, Harry Burns, so a bunch of debutants, plus Will Addison is there. Uh, very versatile guy at the back. Um, areas for Ireland, I mean, they lost three of their own lineouts against Japan last week, which is a bit of an uncharacteristic one for an Ireland side, um, and especially because Japan's lineout is traditionally not that flash. Um, but anyway, we'll see how it goes. They tackled at 84%, which is okay, but Andy Farrell would certainly like that to be a bit higher. I think Japan was like at 88, so yeah, still areas to work on for them, but um, yeah, it's, it's largely about building experience and building combinations for these guys. For America, it's um, it's a stable-ish lineup, like which is what they should be doing, I guess, as well. Um, they, they put in a good shift, so if it ain't too broke, don't be fixing too much. Uh, Anu'u, Taufete, and uh, Mullen are the front row. So Taufete, Taufete, I've heard his name pronounced different ways. Um, that's the front row, which is probably the strongest one because um, Taufete probably should have started last week. But um, yeah, I don't know why they didn't. He's a big old unit. He's got heaps of experience at this level as well. So. Yeah, um, the scrum was under a wee bit of pressure against England. I think the stats came out looking pretty nice, but sometimes they were getting the ball out the back under duress. So they may need to do similar here uh, this week, but with a debutant tight head prop against Anu'u, who's a proper veteran. Uh, like, you know, he's not only young, but he's um, yeah, been around the European scene for, for a few years. He's experienced as. Uh, maybe that's an area... America will hold up a bit better than last week. Uh, Peterson and Cavetta are the second row. Peterson had a heap of tackles last week. I think he was like 10 from 11. So similar kind of work rate stuff that we expect to see from some of the big men in the second row. Hume Hayes got a good try last week. He was a powerful ball runner. So we'll expect to see the same as he starts after being on the bench last week. Hatting and Dolan are there as well. Dolan seems to be a bit of an everywhere man so they, they may need to be but they did get enough position in their game against England to, to cause problems to Haas and Cardi continue their 19 combo Cardi that name is familiar to Ireland fans for sure but maybe not this face even though the face even kind of looks the same as his brother similar there's a resemblance uh, he slotted a 50 50 meter penalty last week so uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Americans opt for the three early if they get a chance uh, Campbell and Whitting are the midfield that's the same Crusaders on the left wing Christian Dyer comes in on the right wing and Teo who had a few defensive calamities last week uh, shifts to fullback which when I've seen him play for the MLR is kind of in the MLR is kind of his more familiar position so hopefully he has a better game than he did last week um They've made a few changes. It's still a 6-2 split for them. Guerra is going to get his debut if he uh, comes on. Wu Ching had three defenders beaten in like less than 30 minutes last week. So good kind of cameo from him last week. Brinkley's there. Waldron Harmon. Uh, Will Maggie comes in on the bench. Busker still there after getting his debut last week. There's no Marcel Bracchi. He had an HIA uh, with that clash of heads last week as well uh what was good for usa last week they managed 400 odd run meters against england which is solid man they managed 24 defenders beaten their line out was solid 85 percent so a fair bit to like but they had 18 turnovers conceded which is horrendously high but speaks to a team that didn't have a lot of prep time so uh yeah the bookies have got ireland by 27 and rugby forecast algorithm ireland by 32 so whilst that's still a pretty comfortable victory compared to the odds for the Canada ye, um, England game, this one's looking like it's going to be a fair bit closer. But anyway, I always hope the games are a bit closer, especially when I'm a neutral. So I hope the US can put in a good shift. But as I said, I'm pretty excited to see some of these guys like Harry Byrne, Rob Balcoon. Um, you know, I know Craig Casey's already had his debut, but more of these guys, the up and coming Irish guys who may be maybe some of the core guys for that squad going into 2023 we will see but anyway you guys let me know your thoughts on this one do you think ireland will fare a wee bit better than the english did last week i mean not criticizing them but 14 points was a good game anyway stop rambling you guys take care i'll talk to you guys soon see you later bye